Hello there, you're watching the press preview, a first look at what is on the front pages. Time then to see what is making the headlines with the Daily Mirror's associate editor, Kevin Maguire, and the Telegraph's assistant comment editor, Olivia Artley. Both of them with us from now until just before midnight. Welcome to both of you. So let's see the front pages then, and starting with the Financial Times, which leads with the story dominating the news tonight. Their headline, more than 30 migrants drown in the worst disaster of the Channel surge. The Metro asks, why didn't France stop them? Here's the Telegraph's front page, which declares 31 migrants die in Channel disaster. It is also the lead story for The Guardian, which shows a mother helping her children to the shore from a different boat in Dungeness. The Eye describes today's victims as having died in search of a better life. The Daily Mirror reports on how the lives of children are put at risk as they cross the channel. And The Sun calls today's events shameful. Well, let's bring in then Kevin Maguire and Olivia Utley. And Kevin, uh, for many of those with this sad prediction that one day, you know, this day would come, this is a very dangerous shipping lane, and here we have at least 31 dead. Uh, and now what did the politicians do? Yeah, I think they'll start a blame game. Uh, there was that statement, the call between Boris Johnson and uh, uh, Emmanuel Macron, the French president, about how they will cooperate more. And I think they, they, they probably will. I think that will now happen. They will see the severity of the threat, but there's no, no doubt there's going to be uh, finger pointing both sides. Uh, the mayor of Calais uh, blaming uh, Snickel Johnson, uh, uh, Boris Johnson, saying how come these, these boats were allowed to be launched and people traffickers are literally getting away with murder, but it is absolutely so grim. And as you say, there was a terrible inevitability about this if those crossings were continuing. And uh, Alf Dubbs, Lord Alf Dubbs, he was a child refugee himself. He fled the Nazis to come to, to Britain on the kinder transport. He, he said, yes, it's a tragedy, but it's not unforeseen. And uh, I think on, on both sides, it's yes, it's been a political issue, but it's too often just been a slanging match and 31 people have paid with their lives that's men women children we we call them migrants but they're you know their moms dads brothers sisters uh, fathers mothers uh, you know they are real people flesh and blood humans like us yes and a conversation tonight uh, olivia between the the french president and uh, boris johnson the uk prime minister they agreed uh, the readout from downing street says on the urgency of stepping up joint efforts to prevent these deadly crossings and to do everything possible to stop the gangs responsible for putting people's lives at risk. And certainly the focus from Downing Street has always been on this business model of the people smugglers and on the fact that the French need to clamp down on the coastline. But is it time for a major rethink uh, now? Uh, for example, the suggestion by many that actually the processing of these asylum claims needs to be done in France in order to negate the need for anybody to make the crossing. I think, I think, yes, I think there definitely is an argument for that. I think that both Macron and Boris Johnson have a, have a pretty good point tonight. Um, as you say, Macron's, Macron's saying that, that, that the British aren't doing enough, A, to we allow immigrants to work illegally. It's far too easy for them to get into the black market. There's a very big incentive for them to come over here. Um, it's, it, we don't really deport migrants when they do arrive here. So, so of course, they're going to come here. Um, and, and we're not really doing enough to stop that. But, but as, as Boris Johnson says, the French authorities aren't doing nearly enough to stop these evil people smuggling gangs um, who, are, who are just trying to take money out of the pockets of some of the most desperate people in the world and, and are killing them in the process. He's right to say that it's close to murder. The problem is that, that as we said, as Kevin said, it's, it, it is a slanging match. And up until now, there have been surprisingly few tragedies this year, actually. We've had remarkably good weather and, and uh, luckily, really, just as a result of luck, um, very few people have died making these crossings. So both Macron and Johnson have been kind of ramping up the rhetoric, attacking each other. And actually, they know that that's pretty politically expedient for them. The, the English love a row with the French, the French love a row with the English. Um, Boris and Macron are both worried for different reasons about their leadership and and in a way it, it, it helps them to sort of to, to pour petrol on the on the on the sort of row with each other um and they just sort of thought well there don't seem to be that many tragedies at the moment you know i think in the back of their heads they thought 
it seems to be it's not it's not a disaster yet and now it has become a disaster and and as everyone's saying tonight it was all too predictable yes and, and kevin we see a political divide don't we in this you know politically divisive story in the newspapers we saw the metro there why didn't france stop them paragraph in the telegraph with boris johnson saying the government which is providing 54 million pounds to france for extra policing would increase its support suggesting he backed joint patrols on french beaches to intercept migrants before they sail whereas the guardian uh, saying that charities are now urging the uk government to to save lives by opening up safe routes for asylum seekers so you know this is divisive and and and, and is is there, you know, a, a happy medium somewhere through this? Uh, yes, we can discover it. I think why didn't the French stop them is a perfectly le legitimate question, but it is not the only question. And as the Guardian uh, raised, if you choke off all legal routes into the UK, then people will, who are desperate will try and find other ways. That's when they become prey to the people smugglers. Now, having legal routes allowing uh, asylum claims to be processed in, in France wouldn't uh, end the cross-channel uh, uh, trade completely, but it would actually re reduce it and you would give people a hope elsewhere because they are legally entitled as uh, refugees and asylum seekers to go to the country that's their destination. Now, when we were members of the European Union, we had the so-called Dublin Convention, which was an arrangement that uh, asylum seekers migrants were supposed to stay at their first, uh, the first safe country they reached. That doesn't apply now, we're out of the European Union, but international law, the UN Convention, is you can go where, where you want. And in some ways, people wanted to come to Britain and they want to start, as the eye put it, uh, a, a, a better life. They want to work. They want to contribute. Uh, they, they want. They want to prosper. Is uh, a, a compliment to Britain. Uh, some of it is they. They have relatives here already. Uh, the language is an attraction. Um, the ability to work is an attraction too. And if we try to make it for us Britain, and we just try to keep everybody out in a world that we know is destabilised with wars, with poverty, with famine, with climate change, with persecution. Some of the countries people are coming from, uh, for instance, Syria and Iraq are armed forces have been involved there. So we know uh, that, that there is trouble in those regions. They, they want they want to come and it's, and it's understandable. And we need somehow to play our role because we get very, very few migrants and refugees compared to most of the countries in the world. Mainly they stay very locally. Uh, for instance, Syria, there are far more Syrian refugees in Lebanon, in Turkey and in Jordan there are, than are certainly in the UK. Um, but all these questions have, have to be asked and hopefully they can be asked in a, in a, and answered in a kind of rational, non-blaming non way. But I think, I think we will just descend into that and some petty politics will come forward. But... Uh, what happened today with 31 dead, when people like Nigel Farage was saying the RNLI was just a, a taxi service picking up people in, uh, in, in the channel. I don't know how he will sleep at night now after saying that. Because these people, they've gone uh, in the, I think it's in the metro, the French interior minister says, they, they'd, they'd set sail or they'd been put in what was essentially a, a paddling pool. That's how he described it. He said it was like something you would inflate in your in your... Garden. Uh, yeah, that's the desperation that they that they have, and we don't want people drowning off the coasts of the UK. They were the way they were in the Mediterranean as they were leaving places, uh, countries such as Libya. And certainly the uh, the mirror that we saw there as well, Olivia, uh, showing, as they put it, vulnerable faces, six children about to cross the channel in a different inflatable, uh, under the noses of watching French cops, as the paper puts it. But just quickly, politically, you know, how does this feed into the Brexit debate of, uh, you know, we're going to take control of our borders, the Nigel Farage taxi service idea, Pretty Patel with the idea of naval frigates, you know, patrolling and everything. How tough does the government need to be seen to be on this story, and uh, 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 what does their instinct tell them to do right now? Well, I mean, it, it couldn't be a more decisive issue. You look at um, Twitter and immediately, you know, you search channel crossings on Twitter and you see that it's divided in half between people saying um, this is the fault of the French authorities, this is the evil people smuggling gangs. The solution is to process migrants offshore to break that link between coming to Britain and living and working in Britain. That's the sort of right traditional conservative argument and then you've got the the left-wing argument which is 
The problem is that, that these are all desperate asylum seekers. Um, they're not economic migrants. They are they are people who desperately need our help. And we're, we've cut off all routes to safety. And we should open our borders and allow, allow as many refugees as possible um, into the country. Uh, I think, you know, Kevin, Kevin's right to say that say that the world is becoming a more dangerous place and we do have to sort of live up to our international responsibilities. And I think the government will recognise that, um, partly because it makes cooperation very difficult with other countries if the government refuses to sort of accept their international responsibilities. And, and I think it is it is true, and I think the government will recognise that there are too few routes to genuine for genuine asylum seekers coming to the UK. Um, there's so much bureaucracy, it takes such a long time to get to Britain. And if you're really, really desperate, you don't have Olivia. that sort of time. Uh Apologies, yes. but we are running We are running well over. There's so much to say. It's certainly dominating the newspapers. We will turn our attention to other matters after the break, including Boris Johnson making his first appearance at PMQ since his somewhat gaff-laden speech earlier this week. With Sky Store Premiere, watch brand new movies at home while they're in the cinema. 007. We thought you must be dead. I've come back to play. You don't know what this is? No Time to Die. Available now in Sky Store Premiere. It was embarrassing. Those players were actually disgraced. We should take responsibility. We've got to do that. Someone's got to go in that dressing room and be a leader. There's no time for recriminations. No more room to hide. A fallen giant can get right back up again. But it will require true character because there will be no mercy at the bridge. Chelsea hosts the Man United team with everything to prove. Watch live in this venue. We've got a bumper crop of deals at Morrison's, like a British beef joint from our butchers, $5.99 per kilo. Morrison's. Make good things happen. Over half a million Skybet customers use deposit limits to help manage their betting budget. That's enough to fill 46 cops, 160 lofts, 19 valleys, 22 deep dales, 25 dens, or 65 six deals! That's a lot of sports fans who know their limits. All good bookmakers have deposit limits, so whoever you bet with, set an appropriate one and enjoy the sport. Deposit limits. That's betting better. How can aerial pods help with climate change? Wash colder and see. Now when we take on tough stains like mud and sweat, we can save energy. Aerial pods work brilliantly on cold to give you an outstanding clean. And if we all turn to wash colder, we could save as much CO2 as taking up to half a million cars off the UK roads. Pod colder and reduce CO2. Always keep away from children. On a great hair day, I feel that little bit stronger. My hair won't bring home the title, but feeling unbreakable sure can. <laughs> because the power of hair isn't just how it looks, it's how it makes you feel. Pantene Grow Strong with biotin and bamboo for stronger, longer hair. Awaken your hair and, and your, your power. power. Try Pantene Lift and Volume with biotin and rose water. Get fuller, thicker looking hair. Pantene. Cases of anxiety in young adults are rising as experts warn of the effects on well-being caused by the pandemic. This night, just us two. Well, it reminded me of how good our years together have been. This is a moment I think about whenever I think of us. Find your moments that matter with Piano Cruises. Well, welcome back. You're watching the press preview. With me now, Kevin Maguire and Olivia Artley. There they are. Welcome back. Uh, welcome back to both of you. So, after what might be described as a torrid week for the Prime Minister, he, uh, he faces the Commons. How did it go, Kevin? 
Yeah, I think it's a torrid three weeks, everything. And uh, <laughs> Keir Starmer said, is everything OK, uh, Prime Minister? Which, of course, is what uh, a TV reporter said to the to Boris Johnson after he made that uh, Peppa Pig's ear of a uh, speech on Monday at the CBI. Uh, there were more Tory MPs behind Boris Johnson today, but you can, you can just see uh, Keir Starmer's changed his approach. I think it's been a, a combination of sleaze and the self-inflicted own goal by... by by Johnson, which alienated so many of his MPs, but also the fact that I just wonder, he had to go and isolate with COVID Keir Star, but he's come back uh, fizzing with energy and, and, and more aggression. I just wonder if he used that time to have a good think and a reset. Yeah, or a nap, who knows? It's a, it's a busy time, isn't it? <laughs> um, a final quick story from you, Olivia. First Noel, it always takes me a while to get these gags in the pages, I have to say. Uh, but anyway, a, a festive booze shortage. I know, it sounds like a nightmare. I think that's a very good way to get uh, people to sign up to be an HGV driver, tell them they can't have any booze at Christmas if they don't. <laughs> oh, that was brief. Anyway, thank you very much indeed. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to read what's sort of shortage. Uh, Bucks Fizz. Oh, not sure we'll have that anyway, do we? And, and gin yeah. may be in short supply. There's so many gin companies yeah. now. That really can't be an issue, I don't think. Anyway, Kevin, Olivia, thank you both very much indeed.